Welcome to my video on finding inverse functions graphically and algebraically. Now let's get started. First, we must ask ourselves, what does it mean to find the inverse of a function? Well, the inverse of a function is the relation formed when the independent variable, x, is exchanged with the dependent variable, y. What is the notation we use to express the inverse of a linear function? It is f to the negative 1 power of x. And we refer to this as the inverse of f of x. Now we are going to learn how to find the inverse of a function graphically. We are going to use the function f of x equals 3x minus 6. First, we will plot the points for our parent linear function, which is f of x equals x. Now, we're, we're used to saying y equals x. That's the equation form. So first, you will plot the points, which I did over here on the right in purple, and then after you plot the points, you can draw the line. So this is our parent linear function, f of x equals x, or as we say as an equation, y equals x. Next, you're going to plot the points of the original function, which is f of x equals 3x minus 6. So I start with the y-intercept, which is negative 6, and then I go up 3 and to the right 1. And I continue that up 3 to the right 1, up 3 to the right 1, and so on. Once I have plotted these points, I can draw my line. And as you can see, my lines are not very straight. So, but as long as you have the points plotted, it's okay if your lines aren't perfect. Now we will find the ordered pairs on this line. First, we have 0, negative 6, and then 1, negative 3, 2, 0, 3, 3, 4, 6, and 5, 9. The next step, step number 4, is to switch the x and y coordinates. So if you look at my first ordered pair of the original function, it was 0, negative 6. And so my first ordered pair of the inverse function will be negative 6, 0. Now if you notice, I have brought the negative sign with the number. You do not have to switch negative signs. Do not change a negative sign that's in front of a number. It goes with it. It stays with it. Now you are ready to plot the ordered pairs of your inverse function. We will start out with negative 6, 0. And then we go to negative 3, 1, 0, 2, 3, 3, 6, 4, and 9, 5. Before we move on to number 6, I want to talk to you about what I have down here at the bottom where it says important. Now, if you notice, my blue line represents my original function. My green line represents my inverse function. Now, the original line and the inverse line should be a mirrored reflection of each other over the parent linear function, y equals x. So you always want to check and make sure that your graph shows that. So let's look at the top part here of my blue line. And sure enough, if you look at my green line, they are mirror reflections of each other across the y equals x. And let's do it again for the lower parts of each line. If you compare them, they are mirror images of each other over the y equals x. Now we are ready to write the inverse function, and we will do this by finding the slope and y-intercept or two points on the inverse line. So let's look at it. Um, I see that my y-intercept is y equals 2, and I could go up 1 and to the right 3, and I will hit the next point. And you can pick two other points. If I start here and go up 1 to the right 3, I have found my slope, 1 third. So here is the equation written as a function. f of x equals 1 third x plus 2. Now let's look and see what the inverse function looks like in a table. We will use the same functions as we did in the graphing example. So what will the inverse look like in a table? Well, let's first look at the original. 
The original, remember these are our ordered pairs that I have just now divided and put all of the x coordinates under the x column and all of the y coordinates under the y column. So to express the inverse in a table, I would just again switch the x with the y. So this would be negative 3, positive 1, negative 6, 0, 0, 2, and 3, 3. Now, I did not mention this on the previous page, but when you are switching the x and y value, you are not changing the sign, the positive or negative, of that number at all. If your y value is a negative 3, then in the inverse, your x value will be negative 3. Now, how do we express this as ordered pairs? Well, we did that on the previous page also, but I want you to see that I've included the set notation. So again, if you see ordered pairs and you need to find the inverse, you are merely going to just switch the x and y value. So here we go. I just did negative 3, 1. Now I'm going to write negative 6, 0, 0, 2, and 3, 3. And there's my little commas. Okay. So now let's move on to how do we find the inverse of a function algebraically. If you are one of my students viewing this, steps number two and three are the two steps I would like for you to put in your notes. If your equation is expressed as a function with f of x, then you will need to do step number one, which is to replace f of x with y. And then after that, you will do step number two, which is you will switch the x and the y. Now think about it. It only makes sense. We've done it uh, when we are trying to find our inverse graphically. When we're doing the table, our ordered pairs, we're always switching the x and y. So that's what you'll do here also. Before we move to step number three, I want to remind you one more time that when you are switching the x and y, when you're exchanging them, you do not switch the numbers or the coefficients that the x might have. So if you have y equals 3x, it will now be x equals 3y. You're only switching literally the x variable with the y variable. Now on to step number 3, which is solve for y. So after you switch the x and the y, now you need to solve for y because y is no longer isolated on one side of the equation. And then finally, if the inverse equation is a function, replace the y with the inverse of x, which is f to the negative 1 power of x. Now let's do an example of finding the inverse algebraically. And we will use the same function that we have used this entire lesson. Because this is a function, I'm first going to replace the f of x with y so that I have y equals 3x minus 6. Okay, now I'm ready to switch my x and y. So when I do that, I will have x equals 3y minus 6. Now I am ready to solve for y. I will first add 6 to both sides of my equation and I will have x plus 6 is equal to 3y. Now I will divide all three terms by 3 by the coefficient of y and going backwards here I have y equals 2 plus 1 third x. Now I always like to have y on the other side or on the left side I should say so I'm going to rewrite this as y equals 1 third x plus 2. Now since this is a function I'm going to rewrite this using my function notation and that will be f to the negative 1 of x or as we would say the inverse of f of x equals one-third x plus two. 
I hope this video has helped you and I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.